All right, in part two, I'm gonna increase the complexity just a little. And so in the circuit, I had this EMF that supplied 10 volts. And it turns out that that EMF was really a, uh, um, was really a, a battery, it was not a pure, it was not an ideal EMF, but was in fact a, uh, a battery that had an ideal EMF of some amount and an internal resistance R. And in this case, R we're going to say was, we're going to say was 0 0.2 ohms. Okay. And so then we'll come around, draw the rest of the circuit. This is still a 5 ohms as we had before. And so the first question we want to ask was, okay, well, this has to come all the way in here, was that, okay, so what was the real ideal EMF of the, of the battery? So remember before, this, what we had was 10 volts on either side of this, this battery, a potential drop, okay? And so this was generated by this combination of an ideal EMF and an internal resistance. And so we know that this internal EMF is going to be the terminal voltage that it create, that, uh, that was created plus the um, potential drop across this internal resistor. And so if looking at it the other way, what we knew before is that the potential just difference from these two points, well, that was the terminal voltage, okay? And that has to be equal to as the EMF that was generated by this ideal EMF minus the voltage drop across the resistor. And so using this, we can back out what the internal EMF was. Okay, so by, by doing that, we find that, um, let's get some, okay, we'll do it up here. So the EMF then was equal to the terminal voltage, which is 10 plus the current, which uh, we found last time was um, two amps times the internal resistance, which is 0.2, that's 0.4, and so the internal EMF, or the ideal EMF of the battery, was uh, a 10.4 volts. And so when you're dealing with where you may or may not have ideal EMFs, or you may be dealing with real batteries, etc., it's important to know whether you're talking about the terminal voltage or the internal ideal EMF of the, of the system. And so the internal ideal EMF always has to be larger than the terminal voltage because it loses some of that potential going through the internal resistor of the non-ideal voltage source. Okay, so we now we have the potential source. Let's go ahead and calculate the power that's dissipated by the internal resistor. So power, which is uh, I times vo the voltage across this internal resistor, it's also equal to I squared times the resistance, and that seems to be an easier relationship to use. In this case, we know the current from before, that's uh, 2, and we know the, uh, the internal resistance, which is 0.2, and so that's 4 times 0.2, 0.2. 8 watts, so that's the the uh, power dissipated by the internal resistance of our voltage source. Okay. Before we go on, I would like to do again the looking at the voltage as a function of uh, uh, distance as you move around the circuit. So if we go ahead, again, we're going to start here at the negative terminal, this is my voltage is equal to zero where I'm starting. So now, in going across this ideal EMF, I go to a point of 10.4 volts, and then I go a little ways on a conductor where it's constant, 
And then I have a potential drop equal to uh, 0.4 volts across this internal resistor. And that brings me down then to 10, where I happily stay at 10 all the way around until I get to the second resistor, which then um, the, takes me all the way back down to zero. And since that's connected by ideal conductors all the way around to the end of the terminal, we have zero the rest of the way. So here we can compare what we had before for our ideal case. For our ideal case, it just went directly up to 10, then over and back down over the resistor. For now where we have the non-ideal voltage source, we have some um, ideal EMF, which takes us slightly higher than the terminal voltage, and then the potential drop across the internal resistor brings us down to the terminal voltage at which it stays across and then comes down uh, uh, the rest of the way after it goes through this single resistor.